Hi, I'm Michael Bean, acting teacher, and this is your free lesson for myfreeactingclass.com for Wednesday, March the 10th. Uh, I run Biz Studio and BD Street Studios. I've been teaching acting for almost 20 years now, 19, you know, uh, and uh, today we are going to be talking about some resources on the website of a woman named Bonnie Gillespie. And we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, branding, you know, which is particularly relevant in uh, the US market, you know, but I think is useful for all actors to think about. It basically is, the short version is, uh, what do people assume about you when they look only at your picture? Yeah, and, and so when I am talking to students, uh, what I will often say, especially because I, I teach a lot of young folks, but really I think it's true for um, for anybody. I'll just say, what are you sick of people you don't know assuming about you? <laughs> right. So you know, you meet somebody and they're a friend of a friend, or they're a friend of your mom's. You know, and then right, if you're a friend of a friend, if you're Claudine friend of your mom's, if you're Mesa, uh, the, you know, and then they turn to their friend and they say, oh yeah, you know, Claudine, she's so, yeah. And probably over time, there have been some consistent adjectives and probably they're wrong. Like probably, you know, they do not encapsulate sort of the fullness of who you are as a person, you know, and you're like, why do people always assume I'm bleh? So whatever it is that people assume that you are, probably this is influential in what they will assume you are when they don't know you and you just walk into the room to meet new people for the first time, right? So if people are like, oh, she's so annoying, you know, uh, even if Mesa's like, wait, I'm not annoying. That's totally unfair. Why do people think I'm annoying? You know, but if people generally find you annoying, especially adults, because I mean, that's who's making the decisions. Kids find you annoying as ah, it's you know, not information that I think you should probably base your life choices on, you know, but, uh, but if your parents, friends are like, wow, yeah, Mesa, super annoying, you know, then you can know that you are not annoying, but you can get pictures that make you look extra annoying on purpose so that you can help get all of the roles that there are available for annoying little kids because there totally are roles specifically for annoying kids. And if you happen to be somebody who just, be, maybe you just got like a voice that's like this, you know, you're like, I don't know, this is me being just really honest and vulnerable. And everybody's like, ah, oh, God, it hurts my ears. Right, that you'd want pictures that did that, right? You'd want you in bright colors with like pigtails sticking up out the top of your head, sticking your tongue out at the camera. You know, the that would be the sort of most extreme version, but you'd want at least to sort of guide us there a little bit in the photograph. You know, so the top level question you know, for thinking about branding, you know, is, uh, what do people who don't know you assume about you? You know, and in particular, um, and so that's relevant once you actually get in the room or when you get on Zoom. But I think it's particularly useful to think, what do people who don't know you assume about you when they just see footage of you or when they just see a picture of you? You know, and so that's the article that we're gonna look at today. Now, uh, Bonnie Gillespie, if I would, was really, on top of it, I would have pulled this up here. Let me just quickly. There we go. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to uh, pull up, you know, um, Bonnie Gillespie. Uh, so she, Bonnie Gillespie is uh, a yeah, LA-based, um, or she was an LA-based casting director. She started uh, writing a, uh, she started uh, writing a weekly column, I think for Backstage West, you know, uh, which at that time it was like a publication you know, that sort of covered everything that had to do with the acting industry in Los Angeles. You know, and Bonnie was a uh, casting director um, for independent films, but also for professional you know, films and commercials and TV programs, kind of doing all the things. Um, but her column was so excellent and started uh, sort of, you know, getting so much traction online that she transitioned her career from sort of primarily casting to, I, I believe, primarily assisting actors. And at this point, she sort of does both. You know, she assists actors uh, with their marketing, especially, uh, and uh, she also does some casting in LA. 
you know, like I have not followed her career in the last couple of years. I, the reason that for this article is that yesterday I was like, I wonder what happened to Bonnie Gillespie. I wonder where she's at now. Uh, and so if you're a huge fan of astrology, uh, apparently she has like veered her own personal brand heavily towards woo-woo astrology. Um, and I say woo-woo because she says woo-woo. There's actually a page that says woo. It's a link right on the main page. You know, um, she wrote in a book, you know, uh, that's all about that. I don't know anything about that side of her career at all. So I'm gonna stay away from the astrology side of things. Uh, and, uh, but if you want that, like she's pretty rad in the other respect. So <clears throat> there it is. Uh, now, let's take a look at this. Uh, so here's, uh, this is uh, Bonnie's uh, bio from her website, bonniegillespie.com, right up there, about Bonnie. All right, um, Bonnie built her empire by demystifying the casting process, eliminating the business side of pursuing a creative career, starting with her first weekly column for actors in 1999. Uh, she teaches the curriculum most popular of her books, Self-Management for Actors, made one of the top 10 best books on acting ever written. Every time I see something like this without a, um, a attribution, I'm like, who named it one of the top 10 books? Um, I mean, I happen to agree, you know, uh, that is one of the, you know, my top 10 useful books. So, right, casting, <clears throat> coaching, exploring the woo. Uh, there you have it in her words. Uh, I love her sort of plain language for things. Um, also her mission statement, you know, here. Uh, and she has some wonderful posts about sort of finding your own personal mission statement versus living my dreams by helping others figure out how to live theirs. Love that. Uh, so her book, Self-Management for Actors, you know, which uh, Candy, I think it would probably be like the most relevant for you and is probably you know, worth looking at. I believe you can uh, buy it as a PDF on her website even, you know, leave, so you don't even have to go anywhere. Um, the so much detail in this book, you can see it's 424 pages. Uh, the, you know, this is like an early proof, you know, from 2014, I think it was part of like the Kickstarter campaign, you know, that um, helped, uh, it helps her publish the fourth edition. So let's just scroll down to the index. So many, so many, so many. So here we go. Um, mindset, da, 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 da. prep, your bullseye, your show Bible, targeting buyers, your business plan, the right training. Now, reminder that uh, all of this stuff is geared toward the Los Angeles market, which is uh, maybe a hundred times more competitive than the Vancouver market. Certainly it's, it's 30 times more competitive than the Vancouver market. And my guess is it's substantially more than that. You know, the, um, I've you know, talked about this before. Maybe that's an unfair me, me, uh, thing to say. My, my math is a little bit wrong. You know, I've talked about in the past how there's 30 times as much production in Los Angeles and there are a uh, hundred times as many actors you know, so what is that? That's not 30 times as, as much competition. That's three, that's three times. Still a lot of competition, but still. Um, basically, in Vancouver, you've got eight or nine casting directors who do all the film and TV acting. Uh, in Los Angeles, you've got maybe 300 casting directors. So uh, getting them to remember who you are as a person is basically just never going to happen, which is why so much energy in LA goes into um, branding, into going, here's exactly who I am. You know, I'm the annoying girl with annoying photos of me being annoying, you know, so that when you need something, you're like, yes, boom, I see it immediately in the picture. That's who it is. In, uh, in other markets, you know, and uh, you know, I, I possibly, you know, Claudine, you can speak to uh, what the market in the UK is like, but certainly in Vancouver, uh, you want something that's a little bit more open-ended, you know, so you don't want to go all the way, you know, with your branding because you want them to see you for annoying girl, but also for like sweet girl next door, you know, because there will be days you know, where they just happen to need somebody who looks like you. So uh, your bullseye, your show Bible, uh, this is, uh, you know, again, if you were to dive more deeply into Bonnie's work, she would essentially recommend looking at the shows that are casting that need actors who are like you, right? So once you figure out sort of what your thing is, you know, uh, what she calls your bullseye, you know, then um, she, you know, says, go and look at the shows that need some, uh, somebody, uh, actors who are sort of in that bullseye, right? So you're, okay, you're the annoying girl, like which shows are casting uh, like annoying little girls regularly? 
targeting buyers. Uh, a lot of this, of course, is geared to adults. You know, but if you're a mom, you know, or a parent, you know, who is really going the next level, you know, uh, absolutely, you could do a deep dive here. Uh, materials. I think this is some of the most relevant stuff uh, for everybody because this is what helps your agent get you work, your headshot, your resume, your reel, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, become a booking machine, auditions, on set, content creation, master your market, move to Los Angeles, details, details, details. Um, so, uh, the uh, let's go to the the specific article on branding that uh, caught my eye that I want to share with you today. Nope. That is the wrong thing to click on, Michael Mean. Here we go. How to figure out your actor brand. Uh, so uh, one of the things uh, that she's got here you know, is um, the, so again, this is bonniegillespie.com. You can find this article there very, very easily. I'll also throw it into the chat window, uh, should you so desire. Uh, so that you can uh, go into detail and read this yourself. Boom, there it's in the chat window. Uh, the <clears throat> uh, There's a link here to the Self-Management Practice Facebook group, you know, 13,000 plus people. You know, so she recommends all these things and then she gives you a place where you can take advantage of this, you know, where you can just go and um, have immediate access to people who are uh, interested in this work and engaged with it. You know, so uh, here's her best thinking about sort of how to get feedback on your headshot that might be useful. Okay, so uh, she talks about uh, creating a Google survey. You know, um, one of the things here uh, that uh, that I really like <laughs> is here. Uh, pretty much every day, someone will toss a photo up, a photo ten, never ten. Um, you uh, you want to. Get information on one photo at a time. Her de the details of this are so wonderful. Uh, every person who sees another person, ah, here it is. Um, sure, you could just slap up, a, uh, so she recommends creating a Google survey. And I've never thought of this before, but I think it's very smart um, because she is basically saying that if you allow people to see each other's comments, then they will skew in the direction of other people's comments. The first time somebody says annoying, other people are gonna be like, yeah, annoying instead of looking at it with fresh eyes. So uh, I think a Google survey is a great idea. Just make it way easier to participate with. You know, don't require email addresses, don't make, don't, no clicks, no downloads. You know, uh, super, super, super simple. Keep the qu questions really simple and straightforward. Just survey one headshot at a time. You know, and you can do this informally just by choosing 10 people who you are actually connected to. So if you're like, ah, Google surveys, they stress me out. Um, a, a way of doing the same process would just be to pick 10 people. Like, let's say, you know, may say you'd pick, like, you'd be like, okay, um, these four friends of my mom's and these four friends of mine and these like four parents of my friends, right? Like you sort of wanna, you know, uh, some people who knew you and especially a bunch of people who didn't, especially sort of adults who are just, you know, um, so that you can get some idea of like how adults you know, who don't know you and who don't uh, sort of like have that, basically who, who um, don't have that like extra, like they're gonna be nice to you no matter what, you know, are uh, thinking about your photo. You know, so, right? Because somebody who's like, like your grandma's probably not gonna be like, she's so annoying because you know, she knows you really well. Uh, you know, and same thing goes, you know, for, for like Candy, if you're sending this to your 10 best friends, you know, then you are skewing your data, you know, in the direction of, you know, somebody who knows you deeply and what you actually want, you know, is sort of the impression of the photo, you know, so the, um, so you could curate your own 10 people, you know, if that feels easier than sort of like doing a survey, you know, and otherwise you could just make one of these survey links and pop it on, you know, um, the self-management practice Facebook page. You know, and get a whole bunch of random people who aren't connected to you at all, but who are engaged in this work and know exactly what that is, provided that like, you know, do your homework a little bit and go through uh, the, you know, this post on Bonnie's website, you know, so that you're doing it in a way that's easy and clear and makes sense. Um, but then you could get a whole bunch of opinions on that. Uh, I'm actually going to get new uh, pictures taken you know, in the next week or so. So I'm, I'm awfully tempted you know, to do it, it myself. Perhaps I will just do it and then report back to you. Yes, we'll, we'll explore together. Uh, the, there's a whole bunch of uh, sort of specific details you know, here uh, that maybe aren't 
um, you know, worth going through right now. Never restrict the age range. Um, the note that your photos pose could be responsible for your feedback. Uh, so I really like this, it's so clear. If your photo has the ever popular peeking over your shoulder pose, you'll get words like sneaky, mischievous, dishonest, and possibly vixen, mistress, liar, cheater, and such. If you're in that fun one eyebrow up, shrug shoulders, finger guns pose, you can expect a lot of words like quirky, uh, comedic, fun, wacky, silly. And while that may be great for your photo, unless it's true for you at your idling speed, it is not helping you. If you are sexy, you will get the word sexy even if the pose is as dry as a passport photo. If you are hilarious, that'll come through in a silent video in which you seriously don't even crack a smile. Let the words come from you, not the business you are doing. You know, so uh, even in that uh, LA market you know, where people are really trying to, to hone in, you know, I love this because it is a reminder you know, that this isn't about like, I'm gonna game the system and like sort of pose in a way that you know, makes me as marketable as possible. You know, uh, this is, uh, Bonnie's work in particular is about you know, what, is, what is so me you know, as a performer, as a human, you know, uh, and can I just own that in my photos and how I present? Uh, you can survey a lot of things, but not at once. You know, questions, questions, serve as a sales tool, stay, to, stay out of your own damn way. Um, really like Bonnie's work. You know? And so uh, I recommend checking it out. You know? And uh, for an example of this, you know, and with the, the idea that, again, probably uh, the, uh, if, unless we reveal our answers all at once, then we are going to be skewed by each other's answers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you uh, a picture of uh, one of Claudine's kids. And I'm just gonna show you one picture. You, know, uh, you did send uh, multiples Claudine, you know, but I'm, I'm just gonna pick one of the photos for each of them, just sort of as an example. You know, and, and what I want each of you to do is think of three adjectives, right? So three single word adjectives that just describe your sense of who that you know, kid is just looking at the photo. You know, and then I'm gonna to check to see if you all got them. Uh, and then you can either type them into the chat window you know, or I'll just ask you to like press the space bar and unmute for a second and say your three adjectives. And then we'll just see if there are any similarities. And I'm just doing this fresh. Like I glanced at these photos, but I have not engaged with them deeply. So I'm gonna do it with y'all. Uh, and no one person's ideas here are better than any others. Right, like the only person maybe you know, who has, um, uh, or who, whose uh, opinion I would weight more highly uh, is that of you know, a professional casting director you know, or a professional talent agent, because those are the only people who are seeing a wide range of them. And in fact, although casting directors are choosing people based on their photos, the ones who really have the information uh, are the talent agents because they're the ones who are, you know, they've over the course of their career represented not just one girl who looks like Christina, you know, but seven girls who look like Christina, you know, and each of those girls has had multiple headshots and they've had the opportunity to see like, well, which headshots for girls who look like Christina tend to get the best response, right? So they've, ac they've actual lived experience there. Now, everybody's gonna have an opinion and and the more conviction they have the more suspicious you should be of them unless they are actually a talent agent or have worked consistently as a talent agent because then they can say oh yeah yeah, yeah. i had seven girls look like christina each of them had seven photos i've had 49 different iterations of this and like I have real lived experience about what sells and what doesn't everybody else is just telling you the strength of their conviction in their own opinion in which case you look them in the eyes and you smile and say thank you very much and you do not weight it any more heavily than you know like grandma's opinion you know or my opinion or you know anybody's opinion so that's that's where i suggest you go with that uh okay uh i wish i had thought to cue up the jeopardy music uh so that i could like show you uh victoria's photo and then be like do 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 but you'll just have to listen to me sing it instead um so let's close self-management for actors and let's choose one of these two victoria photos um the uh, well, let's ask Claudine. Uh, Claudine, uh, we're going to look at Victoria's picture first. Do you have a preference for the smiling and the not smiling? Doesn't matter. Okay, great. Uh, well, let's look at this one then. So um, we will, uh, you know, take you know, 
30 seconds you know, with this. So you got to decide on your adjectives real quick because what we want is the first impression, not the like, you know, well, she maybe it's a stretch. I can imagine what we want is the first impression, three single word adjectives. She looks like she's like this and like this and like that. You know, so boom. Do, 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 do. I can't actually sing and think of adjectives at the same time. Okay. Coming back from in five, four, Three, two, one. So, the I'm I'm going to tell you uh, my uh, adjectives last. You know, uh, Mesa, have you got them? Have you got your three? Yeah. What about you, Candy? You got your three or two? Anyway, like <laughs> if you got what about you, Christina? You got your three? Okay, great, Christina. Uh, you go first. What are yours? I feel like she looks kind of like sad, like the other ones. Uh, she seems like a kid that will like- Three single word adjectives because otherwise this exercise is gonna take way too long. Sad, emotional, emotional, emotional and caring. Sad, emotional and caring. Deep thinking, caring, genuine. What about you, Mesa? What do you got? Just press the space bar and then we'll be able to hear you. Yeah. Um, I think that she was like, she could be like the creepy person in a horror movie for some reason. I don't know. Like, she would be like. Uh, so creepy, good, and uh, and two other single word adjectives. So um, sad and mysterious. And sad and mysterious. Creepy and sad and mysterious. You know, and uh, I said uh, serious and soulful and creepy. <laughs> you know, uh, and so that's like that's this photo. You know, uh, you know the the directness, the big eyes, the, like the shape of her face. You know, like is she going to look like the girl in the horror movie a year from now? Probably not. Who knows? Like five year olds, their faces change super fast. Um, but the right here, we got you know some version of like creepy, you know, or serious, you know, or mysterious a couple of times. We got caring a couple of times. You know, caring, sad. So it's there's so we are seeing some commonalities showing up already with just four people. You know, and, uh, and so it's not enough of a sample size to make you know, your life decisions on, but you can see at least the exercise and how the exercise works. Um, let's look at a picture of Christian. And, uh, and then I think that uh, Christina sent us uh, a photo as well. You know, so, uh, we can, uh, so we can look at that. Okay. Uh, Okay, here we go. Uh, so again, 30 seconds, you know, take a quick look, decide on your three adjectives. It'll be easier this time, you know, um, and then we'll rattle them off. Okay, coming back. In five, four, three, two. Oh, Christina's headshot, there it is. One. Uh, okay. Uh, who's, uh, who's got him? Somebody throw him in the chat window already? <laughs> Fun, annoying, and sneaky. Smart, witty, and sneaky. Yeah, nice. Um, what about you, Christina? Kind, sweet, and caring. It gives that vibe. Yeah, great. Um, and, and for me, uh, smart, uh, quirky, uh, polite. Uh, right? So the, this is the thing, especially this exercise, it's all projection. Like, is this, does any of this have much to do with who Christian is as a person? No, of course not. But this photo is gonna tell each of us a story based on what we project on it. You know, and if you can take advantage of that 
and sort of learn what the commonalities are, you know, then potentially it's useful you know, for you in, in marketing and in even you know, uh, useful in knowing where to put your energy in practice. Like let's say you are going into a class that allows you to take a certain amount of uh, charge of the process, you know, which is something that I always like to do you know, with classes you know, whenever I can. You, know, you could go and say, hey, I really wanna make sure I work on sneaky characters because you know, I have these great sneaky photos you know, and I get called in for sneaky characters. And I just wanna make sure that like, I'm, a, I'm the boss at sneaky characters. A number of years ago, I had a student named Kurt Ostland and uh, he came in, he was in an all boys school and he's like, he got glasses in, he was a gamer, you know, and you know, just like, and he thought of himself as a real geek, but he also played rugby at like quite a high level. And so he was huge. He was just this like big square guy, you know, and um, yeah, I think that like, this is not an exaggeration. He had more neck than this, but like, he's very large. Uh, even when he was like 15, 16, I was like, Kurt, you're going to play bullies. And he was like, no, no, I'm not. No. And so we spent, I think, two years working on bully characters. Uh, and he booked like one line or two lines bully character in some Disney movie. And then he did uh, eight seasons of a TV show, uh, Mr. Young as the sort of bully in one of the main cast. Sort of like right afterwards, it's a, you know, it's not not who he is as a person, you know, uh, because he's actually the most incredibly intellectual, like sweet guy. But he played this like sort of Neanderthal thug, you know, because that's what he looks like, you know, and he was just smart enough to pull off the comedy. Uh, all right, let's uh, quickly look at Christina's headshot, you know, and um, and everybody who can type your adjectives directly into the chat window, you know, so that uh, we can I, I can on go, I can scroll like one, two, three, go, and we can all press, you know, enter at the same time, because then there's even less chance that we'll be influenced by each other. So I will do the same thing with mine. Uh, here we go. Here's Christina's headshot. Okay, coming back in five, four, three, two, one, and we're back. Okay, uh, ready and go. Okay, what about you, Claudine? What do you got? Ah, okay, good. So here we go. We've got happy, sweet, honest, friendly, shy, sweet, kind, troublemaker, fun, kind. So kind and sweet coming through loud and clear in this photo, uh, Christina. Yeah, and, um, and, and I think that you know, what you've got here is like, uh, I mean, it's a beautiful photograph, obviously. You know, uh, and um, it, uh, it's this sort of like middle of the road shot, you know, where it's like, it's not a lot, anything. It's kind of like a, a little bit, a bunch of things, you know, in my opinion. Yeah, and so maybe this is like exactly the photo that you want for a Vancouver market. Certainly, you know, this should be enough you know, to send to talent agents that they're like, and then they'll be the ones who are like, you know what, this, this sweet thing or this kind thing, we need like a really kind shot, you know, or you know, uh, or you know, Mesa is, you know, saw troublemaker. Maybe they're like, yeah, we feel like we need more troublemaker. We need more Dora the Explorer. Uh, I'm just teasing. I saw this, the trailer for the Door of the Explorer movie and I was like, it's Christina, but like smaller. Uh, all right. Uh, so uh, there is uh, Bonnie Gillespie's uh, branding typing exercise for you. Uh, thank you everybody for participating today. Uh, Mesa, thanks for joining us. Uh, we would love to see you again. We'll be here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week. Leanne Lapp uh, teaches on Mondays. Those ones aren't recorded, so you can't watch them on YouTube. You would have to be there live and in person, but then she can drop all the inside scoop. Uh, and uh, Tuesday, uh, as a reminder, we're going to have as a guest the fantastic Jennifer Copping, uh, who uh, has a deadly uh, film and TV resume, who uh, runs the film uh, acting department at uh, Langara College in Vancouver and uh, who has an extensive uh, resume for uh, theater uh, in Vancouver.
Jennifer Copping. I'm just going to pull her up on IMDb uh, so that you can see who I'm talking about. Uh, and uh, like I said in yesterday's lesson, uh, Jen is somebody who is just so, so skilled at forming and maintaining relationships uh, in the city of Vancouver. And so my hope is that she'll have some tips to offer us about that because she's somebody who does it um, really from a really genuine place. Like she, she is not, you know, it's the opposite of that sort of stereotype of like, Candy, hi, it's great to meet you. And like, I'm already looking over your shoulder at the next person. Yeah, you know, the uh, right, actual relationship building is a, a much uh, different, uh, much different thing. So uh, this is Jennifer Copping right here. Uh, actress, da -da. Uh, her husband, uh, Jesse, is a filmmaker, a director, and uh, you know, 115 credits. Uh, let's see, right? Riverdale, so many things. You know, Van Helsing, all right. Yeah, she had a, a solid recurring role on uh, Van Helsing. So, so many things, right? And then going all the way back to, holy cow, uh, 1989, you know, here in, uh, uh, if I got my story of Jennifer right, you know, she was in a, a touring Broadway show. She's an amazing singer uh, and uh, then sort of ended up settling in Vancouver. So uh, I'm excited to introduce you to her. And then on Wednesday, we'll be doing more self-tape review. Uh, and if we want to sneak in more of these photo reviews, uh, the Mesa, if you've got a photo uh, of yourself that you're thinking about, okay, this might be the one that I use to send to talent agents, you know, and Candy, if you've, you've got a photo of you, ideally just like, you know, neutral background, you want a good day, you know, sort of a, you know, here's me, um, be happy to do this exercise with them. All right. Uh, thanks for making time again, and uh, we will see you for the next class. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank